All right, so I was recently looking through some of the long-range Facebook pages and forums that I'm a part of. I'm gonna like to look through those things from time to time to see what other people are talking about, see what the new things coming out, and to see the questions that some of the people are asking in those pages. There's a lot of new, a lot of good questions in some of those groups and pages from time to time. Um, and one of the questions that I've seen has been a reoccurring question throughout the years, in some form or another, has been something like this. So it, the question that actually sparked this video, and this is just one variation of a question, the same question that has been asked numerous times. Um, this question went like this: How many can, how many minute of angle canted rail or base do I need to be able to shoot out to a mile? Now, obviously, if you're an experienced long range shooter, um, you know that that question is leaving out a whole bunch of context that you need to really answer that question or give any or give some sort of an answer to that question. Um, you're gonna, you're leaving out what cartridge the person is shooting, what the rifle build is, what scope they're using, all these different things that we really need to know to be able to answer that question. But there's actually, and I was seeing a lot of these these questions and answers in the comments of that question um, and I noticed that a lot of people I didn't see one person leaving or one person uh, giving some of the other things that people really need to think about when deciding what scope rail or canted rail or base that they're right, going to so be. So quick pause for a second um, you're going to be noticed throughout this video there's going to be several times that I'm going to refer to a scope mount as a scope base. Now, I know that's not a big deal it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference but I like to use the right terminology and I noticed that in the editing that I had referred to a scope mount as a scope base several times. So I wanted to clear that up. Um, so with that being said, back to your regularly scheduled program. Hope you guys enjoy it. So first off, what is a canted rail or base? That's what we're going to do. We're going to try to talk about, obviously, what it takes, what you need to be able to shoot out these distances, what a canted rail or base is, and then some of the things that people really don't think about, some of the really important things that people don't think about. So first off, what is a canted rail or base? So a canted rail or base, think if you have a scope, a brand new scope, and you're mounting on a new rifle. Now, this scope has 60 total minutes of elevation travel built into the scope. Now, that means if you mount that scope on a rifle with a zero degree cant or zero minute of angle canted rail or base. Now, a rail is just the rail that the scope sits on. So if you mount the scope in rings and then mount that to the rail, that is your rail. A base um, has the rings attached and then that clamps onto your rail. So that is the difference. But they both effectively do the same thing. Um, so if you have a canted base or rail and you your scope is mounted at a or a zero I'm sorry, minute of angle scope or rails, meaning a perfectly flat uh, rail, and you mount that scope, if your barrel is straight, if everything is perfect under perfect circumstances, now this is hypothetical, um, you should be at 30 minutes of angle in your of elevation to dial up in your scope and 30 minutes to go down. So you're halfway through that 60. So now if you want to shoot at, depending on what distance you want to shoot out to, what cartridge you're shooting, 30 minutes really doesn't get you a whole lot of distance. So if all you have is 30 minutes to dial up and say you're shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor, you'll be lucky depending on the rifle, the, the, the ammo you're shooting, all those things, um, you'll be lucky if that even gets you to a thousand yards. So because of that, and we have all this leftover 30 minutes going down that we're not going to use for anything. So we're really not going to dial down. We're definitely not going to be dialing 30 minutes down. Because of that, we add a canted rail or base. So say you have that 60 minutes. If you add a 20 minute of angle rail, then that puts you at 50 minutes of angle that you can dial up. So now you have that 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 much more distance that you're able to dial out to uh, right off the bat. So that is the point of a canted rail or base. Um, now what do you need? Now, a lot of you know, if you guys follow my videos, you know I'm somewhat qualified to answer what it takes to shoot out to these extended distances, whether it be a mile or well beyond a mile. Um, so, I actually, there's a couple of things that I think about when I'm setting a rifle up on a rail. So, first off, let's think, let's talk about some of these rifles that you see here. So, my 7 Psalm here has the biggest cant of any base that I own. It has a 40 minute of, ale, a 40 minute of angle uh, rail uh, on my 7 Psalm here. The rest of my rifles, all of the rest of my rifles, all only have a 20 minute base. Um, that includes even the 6 Creedmoor that you guys recently saw me shoot out to 2,505 yards. I did that with a 20 minute of angle base. Now, because I did that with a 20 minute of angle base doesn't mean that's ideal. But you have to think about before you go buying a rifle base and and 
you have a scope that has 80 minutes of angle and you buy a 40 minute of angle base you can get every bit of it out and then something ends up not just perfect um, and when you go to zero that scope you're actually zeroing a couple minutes high because something didn't line up just absolutely perfect and even though you are using 40 minutes of that 80 minutes it didn't line up perfect and you're now off zero at 100 yards so that is a that is, could, is something that could happen that is an example but when you're setting a scope up on a base there's first off if i want to shoot out to say first off what i'm thinking about is what's the distance that i'm going to be what's my purpose for this rifle so Am I going to be, yes, I want to sh set it up to be able to shoot to a mile now, and maybe that's a 40 minute base. Maybe it's 80, maybe this rifle, I've ran all the numbers and this rifle takes 80 minutes of angle to shoot to a mile. And that is my goal. So I know I have an 80 minute scope and I'm buying a 40 minute base. So I should be able to dial up to a mile and hold target and send them and be on plate. Sounds fantastic. But how often do you plan to shoot to a mile? Do you even have a place to shoot to a mile? Now, I know I do lots of long range and extreme long range shooting, but I know and I don't think that I take for granted that I am extremely lucky to have the distance that I have available. But before I had this spot, the furthest I had available was 1,200 yards. Um, and yeah, I wanted to shoot to a mile and actually was setting rifles up to be able to shoot to a mile, but 99% of my shooting was done a thousand yards and in. So because of that, really, it doesn't make sense to set up, set your rifle up to be able to shoot to that. Now, a lot of you are going to say, well, okay, I'm going to set it up with a 30 minute base. That's going to get me almost there. And then I still have 10 minutes down and I'm good to go. Yes, that's true, but you're thinking you're you're forgetting about one of the biggest things and this is the thing that I didn't see anybody mention in the comments in that in that post um, and I'd see left out of this conversation more often than not and that is where is your scope the where do you have the best scope picture now what do I mean by that so say you have a scope that has 80 minutes of elevation travel so Depending on the brand, now this this is something that actually does vary by brand of scope, by qual by quality scopes. Quality scopes, you're going to find this less than lower cost scopes. So all the scopes that are sitting here, none of these are super high end scopes. They're very good scopes. They cost quite a bit of money, but none of them are really high end scopes. Um, so these scopes uh, suffer from it even more than something like a Night Force or a Zero Compromise. Some of your really top end scopes are something you can get away with what I'm talking about more. But so what what are we talking about? Let's cut to the chase. So if I plan, so say I'm I'm this is my match rifle. So this rifle has a 40 minute base under it. So now obviously I shoot ELR. This has the most uh, most can't of any of my rifle bases uh, or, or scope rails um, but there's another reason that I use that 40 minute base now actually to be honest a 30 minute base would be ideal but I went with the 40 because I'm going to be using this rifle for matches as well as the ELR stuff that I do so when your scope is set up at the center point so if I'm using a if I'm using a zero, a, like we talked about in the original, if we mount a scope on a zero minute of angle, zero cant rail or base, um, if I mount a scope on that and look through it and I'm zeroed at that 30 minute of angle, that perfect dead center spot, then that is the clearest scope picture that you will get. Now, if you were to dial all the way up, so if you're looking through that scope right then at that clearest point, dead center of the scope, 30 minutes up, 30 minutes down, and you take that scope and you dial it all the way up, and this is this is true for any scope. Like I said, less true for some of the more high-end scopes, but this is true for any scope. If you dial that scope all the way up until it bottoms out, that scope picture is not going to be as clear as it was at that center point. And that's true across the board. Um, I find it because I'm constantly shooting out these extreme distances where I have my scopes bottomed out. My scope picture is rarely as good as I would like it to be, as good as, as, good as it would be if I was only shooting to a thousand yards. So this is my thousand yard match rifle. I shoot thousand yard F-class with this rifle. So this thing has a 40 minute base. To dial to a thousand yards with this rifle uh, takes 
just under seven minutes of angle. So I'm actually only using 25, or sorry, 25, or sorry, seven mils or 25 minutes of angle somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so really I could get away with the 20 minute of angle and be closer, but because I shoot out to those further distances, but like with my six creed more over here. So actually more I say that that actually doesn't make as much sense, but, uh, I shoot out the ELR distances and the 30 minute base or the 20 minute base that I had on here, uh, really was kind of evened it out. So the 40 minute base really didn't gain me much in the clarity department, but I'm only 10 minutes off the center when I dial up to that thousand yards that I shoot those matches at. So I'm really close to center, um, giving me almost the clearest scope picture. So like my six creed more here, thousand yards is typically the, the range that I shoot a lot, do a lot of shooting with it at. Um, and it has a 20 minute base. This thing shoots flatter than my seven Psalm out to a thousand, obviously beyond a thousand, the seven Psalm really takes over, but to a thousand yards, my six Creedmoor shoots flatter than that. So it's only shooting at 22, 23 minutes of angle, depending on the load, all those things. Um, so a 20 minute of angle base is perfect because that puts me, when I'm shooting to a thousand yards, that puts me right in the middle of that scope. So this is another thing that I see people always overlook. It's something that you really need to think about. Um, and if you're setting a rifle up and you're going to be shooting to if you only have a six or 700 yard distance of range, then that 20 minutes makes a lot of sense in a 6.5 Creedmoor because you have the clearest scope picture at the distances that you're gonna be shooting the most. Now, another thing is, like I said, I've got 40 minutes on here because it allows me to get out those further distances. Do I really need that? If, if all I have is a mile range and all I have is a 20 minute base, do I need that extra bit? Say I've got a 60 minute that 60 minute scope we've been talking about this whole time and I have a 20 minute a 20 minute rail underneath it and so I have 50 minutes of elevation and I need 70 to get to a mile and my goal with this rifle that we're talking about is to shoot to a mile so you would think to put a 30 minute under it is going to get me closer I need 80 minutes of or 70 or 80 minutes of angle whatever we just said to shoot to a mile so I need more than that so I'm going to actually have to improvise and use holdover a lot of people forget that you have the ability to hold over and then when you are not when when you run out of holdover if you're shooting beyond that you can turn your magnification down and then you have more holdover as your reticle gets larger um, and you're able to shoot out to even further distances so there are ways around it. if there's a will there's a way i've been able to take my six creed or my seven psalm here to mile and a half 2650 yards um by utilizing not all, every bit of holdover, but even more than that by dialing the magnification way down and still being able to get out to those extreme distances. So if, if yes, you want to shoot to a mile, but you're not going to be doing it very often, does it really make sense to buy that 40 minute rail and, or stick with the 20 minute rail, which is going to give you the clearest picture at the distance you're going to be shooting the most. So that's what I wanted to talk about. I hope this was helpful. If you are looking at buying and setting up a new rifle, maybe this is something that, that you weren't thinking about. So I hope this is helpful. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.